Hello everybody. This is uh, the technician at Parts Guru and today I'm uh, displaying how to open and close these ENA 3, ENA 4, ENA 5, ENA 9. All these models are identical in as far as the opening and closing is concerned. So we will display just the model we have now here ENA 4 which uh, process for opening and closing will apply for all other you know, uh, models. Right now, uh, this machine, we have already removed the water tank from the rear and we have removed the drip tray and the used coffee bin from the front. In order to open this machine, uh, we are using very simple tools here. It's uh, One of them is the oval head key which is uh, for use on the oval head uh, screws and this is a Torx 15 screwdriver that will be used for unscrewing several uh, locations of the Torx screws. Uh, the nose plier is there just in case we need it and this is a hex drive for uh, turning the oval head key. To start opening the uh, casing of this machine you have to go from the rear where you see the Jura logo. You have to twist this Jura logo to the left and it will come off. Inside here you have uh, an oval head screw for which we will use the oval head key and unscrew this key. There is this oval head screw that came off and we lift this to release the sides. Now in order to remove the sides the next step is to remove these two torque screws size T15 from the top to left and right sides. So I will use this to unscrew the torque screw from the left and now the right with this done we turn the machine to the front and try to remove I'll have to turn it on its back so that I can show you clearly how to do this now with the machine turned on its back we can see on this side that there is a oval head screw here locking some tabs that need to be loosened before we can uh, bring the uh, locking tab here the plate so I will remove this oval head screw I have removed the oval head screws and then I lift the tab a little in the front and then pull it down like this and then I will be able to remove the uh, slide these two tabs down and release the side panels. In order to do that I have to use a thin blade screwdriver and nudge these plate out and same way on the other side we can nudge these two out so this will unlock the side panels so we can turn this baby upright and try to push these side panels towards the back and they will come off voila that was easy it's not so in the the inner micro models but these panels they come off easily and uh, you have the right side of the machine opened 
and we do the same thing on the other side. <coughs> Slide the panel out and the left side is out. And on this side you have the brew group. Now that the brew group is visible, we can remove it and I will show you these steps. The first one is to disconnect this tube from the brew group top outlet pipe and then there are three screws even though on this side when you look deep inside you will see there are two screws but the top one is not necessary to loosen and remove the uh, brew group. There are two screws on that uh, rear end side of the brew group. You can see that only one screw is to be uh, removed in order to pull the brew group out. That one is the lower screw and if you are able to see it from a close-up you can see that there are two uh, screw heads visible but you have to remove only the lower one which is T15 and I will use this screwdriver, torque screwdriver to loosen those one screw from the back and the two screws, one is right in the bottom here, bottom of the brew group. I will loosen that and there is one somewhere in the middle position of the brew group. Watch this uh, screwdriver going in the middle portion to remove It is free now. I can pull the brew group out. Voila, this baby is out and you can clean it, sanitize it, repair it, change the o-rings for the piston, whatever and the brew group is out from this side so you can see the space how the brew group takes all this position from the top to the bottom and on the brew group here I'll just briefly explain the parts that you have this gear the tall gear is moving the white gear from top to bottom because this is engaging this group uh, the, the gear this gear is operated by what is visible here is the brew drive gear which is a very small gear but does a good job turns uh, the uh, operating uh, gear this long gear all the way up and down this uh, gear will this small gear brew drive gear will operate this um, this piece is the coffee scraper blade uh, what it does is when the brew group is moving after extraction when the brew group is going back there will be the coffee puck that has to be pushed down into the used coffee bin so this blade will push the coffee puck out from the brew group after the coffee is extracted This piece here is the coffee scraper blade which is a frequent cause of uh, problems in the brew group because it can break and we have even seen in some cases the pieces are broken pieces are found in the used coffee bin. So when it is uh, broken or it is dropped from its uh, location then you can replace it either replace it a new one if it is broken and if it is not broken then you have to remove this and uh, install it back the way I will show you now in order to remove it you just have to use the plier lift it up and pull it back so that the top hook is released and then you pull it down it comes off so in order to slide it back you just align them on both sides push them up so they're there all the way up and then you press this 
to lock it in the top and it will be in the correct position. So this is basically the brief description of what you can do with the brew group and if there is a uh, repair or refurbishing of the brew group is required then we have this video separately uh, on our YouTube channel Parts Guru USA and you can do that uh, if you like. On the other side, uh, I will briefly explain to you the parts that are displaying and visible on this side. Your uh, pump, which is uh, the most uh, noisy and active part that pumps water to make espresso, dispense hot water or generate steam all the time. This pump will be working for all those three functions. And here above the pump is connected this uh, uh, membrane regulator, which regulates the pressure to be uh, passing through the machine. Now this, in this particular model, this uh, membrane regulator is with a hairpin lock, which is uh, something that you can easily pull down, pull out from the, the lock. And this is actually locking the tube, and this tube is going into the boiler. The boiler is covered inside this housing, which is actually to insulate the heat generated by the boiler and not affect the area around it. This complete piece is the electronic control board. Uh, this is one piece in most machines that we are having problems in ordering them and making them available in case this goes bad. It's very difficult part to order uh, because our source in Switzerland is not able to supply as 120 volt electrical parts and that is a handicap but we are trying to find other sources where we can get these but until that happens the electronic boards is something that we cannot uh, replace or uh, supply as a part and as soon as we are able to find a source then we will be able to uh, even offer that in our repair uh, instructions that we send to customers we do explain that our estimate applies to uh, all the parts that we uh, replace in the machine to fix it except the electronic board. And if the electronic board is bad in a machine, then we offer an alternative replacement as a trade-in. And for trade-in purposes, we believe our uh, Seiko Royal Professional or Royal One Touch or Ulica are the models that are the better than these uh, you can always check with us that's all about the um, the opening and closing of this in order to close this uh, machine uh, you can just follow the uh, steps in the reverse order and it's not very difficult once you have opened it and closing it is not that bad. So thank you for watching and I will be uh, back again with another sector and another machine and how to open and close that. Thank you very much.